Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah My dear wonderful people out there Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah This is your brother Abdul Salam Abu Hanifa Today's super pep talk number three is about children For you people who are married It never is late to make things right And for those who are not yet married Learn and prepare for that wonderful journey Of having these little creatures out running in the house as wild as a lion cub is in the savannah. Children, what it is about children that makes us all want them? This is after all how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted the world to be and he created the most beloved activity to mankind that is the intimacy related to children. Alhamdulillah for that great blessings. The title of this super pep talk is Practical Ways to Bring Children as future positive, confident, proactive people without compromising nor trading their Islamic identity and persona. I know it's like a four lines title, but it explains everything that I am going to lay down here right in front of you. Having been a parent to eight children, and Alhamdulillah, all of them are grown now, except my little Latif who is nine years of age and after and before her Rahima 13 but the rest of them have alhamdulillah as they would say grown and flown of the nest I have had an experience with children and alhamdulillah as eight as they seem but they never have been a heavy burden on my neck they never they've always been part of something that I loved very much and I want to share with you some of these experiences first of all and before anything children what are children People look at the children as the little creatures that you make after you get married, but I actually I have a better idea for you. How about looking at children as your time travel machine to you going back to how you were young? Allah gives you another opportunity for you to actually live as a child again. Ain't nobody on earth who's gonna blame you for playing with a child the way they do, do they? Let's say you go, you take them to a playground outside in a park and you get on a swing and you play with your kid. Ain't nobody is going to point out and go, you know, look at that person out there. Ain't nobody. They actually going to think a great deal out of you. So I would have you to think and change your perception that the child right in front of you is actually your travel machine. That you go back in the past, that where you were. Remember those days when you used to play with something that you loved so much? Why don't you bring it up and share it with your child? Why don't you become a child in the body of an adult? It's a beautiful, beautiful feeling to sit down with a child and let your imagination roam and go in a big adventure called I am a child again. This is something that a lot of people unfortunately forget in this day and age, especially with the advent of television, computers, PlayStation, smartphone, iPad, Android think, Android that, and life is getting in their way. Children, a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have known people that spent thousands of upon hundreds of thousands of dollars to get a baby. And suddenly you have a baby free of charge after the first uh, uh, night. Subhanallah. They are a gift after all and a trust and a responsibility if you don't take care of them. My brothers and my sisters, I really want you to think the way you look at kids. Don't look at them as a burden, because if you look at them as a burden, everything around you will look at them as a burden and they will become a burden. Look at them as a gift and what it is that you can do to ensure that this person here at a later age in their life, they are going to become positive, confident, proactive people. And they will not compromise nor trade their Islamic identity or persona for anything else. As a matter of fact, it's like you are going to make a robot with emotions. In the sense that perfection in whatever they do, but they do have emotions. Children have been part in Al-Quran. They have been mentioned in Al-Quran in many ayat. For example, Ibrahim السلام, with his son Ismail and Ishaq. And also Yaqub with his son Yusuf and Benjamin and the other 10 people that were also his sons. And also Isa السلام, the son of Maryam, Yahya the son of Zechariah and so on and so forth. In some of them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the miracle of giving a human being to a barren lady or barren father or something like of that ilk. But my brothers and my sisters, 
in this time here you've asked me to tell you about kids how does Islam look at children how is the best way especially in these days here where things have become very very tough I want to tell you first thing first in the Sahihain of Bukhari and Muslim in a very well known hadith where Jibreel alayhi salam talks to our Prophet Muhammad be Allah's salat and salam be on him this is better than saying peace be upon him which is absolutely rubbish but say Allah salat and salam be upon him if you find it difficult to say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but in any case in the well-known hadith by uh, al-Bukhari and Muslim where Rasulullah sallallahu was one day visited by an unknown stranger dressed in a desert land dressed in white and he, his dark feature that is Jibreel alayhi salam a long story short or the long hadith short in one time he tells him when is the hour Rasulullah sallallahu says the one who is asked is not better informed than the asker so I don't know and you don't know but Jibreel alayhi salam said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you tell me about the signs of the hour and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to him yawm al rabbataha the day the woman will give birth to her lorders, to her managers or to her mistress or master. Our scholars, radiallahu anhu, they gave different explanations, the wars and things like that, but actually we have a better uh, explanation of that. We live in a time where once the child reaches a certain age, they become the masters, and I have seen that a lot kids when they get to the nationhood especially in this country here where the police will give them priority like even my daughter <laughs> Latifa who is nine years of age jokingly she says to Abi, dad you know what if I was like the other thing I can say I'm gonna call the police because you are bad to me well actually I'm not bad to her but that is how she hears from the other kids so the, the parents here become actually remotely controlled by the children children know all they gotta do, and I have seen it with my eyes, where parents cannot see their children just because the child said something to the school. And if you are a parent and your children go to school, you know exactly what I am speaking about. So he said to him, how, how, how do I know? And he said, this is the case when the kid becomes the master. And this is the times of it. Our children have become our masters. If you, you gotta treat them in a certain way, otherwise they pack and go. How to treat children? As an overrule, my brothers and my sisters, anything that Islam says it's halal or haram is applicable to children. For example, what is haram? Backbiting. Backbiting for children is haram too. Belittling Muslims, belittling your children uh, is too. Not speaking to Muslims more than three days, the same thing applies to the kids. Not hitting them, not insulting them. Don't break your promises with them. Do not scare or frighten them. It's haram. Not terrorize them. Don't lie to them and so on and so forth. All those rules that are applicable with the general public, the general Muslims or non-Muslims are applicable to your children. But being the little humans that are growing, being the little mingis, wingy, clingy thingies that are growing, they would require other elements to help us, inshallah, deliver first class service. Well, we're gonna give them the best services. Many of these, what I'm gonna share with you tonight, has been already shared with my kids, all of them, and ideas and any other ones, inshallah, use them with your kids. First of all, let's say about creating the warm and the right warm growth environment. In the world of science, if they want to harvest bacteria, they need to create the proper environment for a particular bacteria because not all bacteria is growing in the same environment. Well, we got to do the same thing here. If we want our children to grow in the best of environments, we need to work at that and create the best environment so that they can experience the family warmth. It's a very good and healthy idea, or it's good, a very good thing for children to see their parents in good terms. This is absolutely, extremely necessary. I remember back in days when I used to be married, when I come home, as soon as I put the keys in the keyhole 
Oh, I hear like, ah, that is here, that is here. And all the children, eight of them would come from all the different angles of the house. And I open the door and all of them are jumping dad and kiss this, hug that, that thing there. And then the mother comes in. I hug her too and give her a kiss on the cheek. And everybody is happy. Dad is back. And then I go and do my thing and they go back to their environment. This is our wonderful memories. My daughter Hanifa and her sister Rahim are here and they can tell you about their experience when dad used to come home. So creating the right warm growth environment free of any tension, free of anything is absolutely crucial. Any problem that you have with your wife, you guys have to learn to wear the Zorro mask. You have to wear the clown mask. And when you get into the bedroom at night, get dig out your boxing gloves or jiu-jitsu or taekwondo and go at it. But in front of the kids, be the perfect clowns and play it safe in front of them because the right warmth and growth environment is absolutely crucial. I give you some pointers, my brothers and my sisters, Parents, you guys, you must show and display affection in front of your kids. Mutual hugging is good. Holding hands is good. Tickling and playing with each other is absolutely fantastic. If you can get in a pillow fight, by all means do it. Let the kids have a laugh at you. Let the kids see dad and mom playing, having a good outburst of thing. Also, sometimes you can just play arm wrestling with your wife who can beat. It's okay guys, you can let yourself beat in some time. time. I did that and I lost and the kids were pulling my leg and laughing at me, but it was a good experience. So as I said, mutual hugging is absolutely good for the child. It teaches your child a lot of things about you, about him, about the environment in which he is growing. Also, as I said, holding hands, even when you are walking outside or at home. Sometimes if you sit to read and your wife sits to read, and then you, you sit with close to each other and you play with, the, uh, hold each other's hands, Alhamdulillah, that is absolutely fantastic. Kisses on the cheeks, guys and ladies. Don't let culture run and ruin your life. It's okay to kiss your wife on the cheeks, my sister. It's also okay to kiss your husband on the cheeks. He also can kiss you on the forehead as a sign of appreciation and you can do the same thing. Nothing in Islam forbids you from doing that. Well, alhamdulillah. Compliments exchange in front of the kids, in front of the kids, exchange. There were many times the food was not really up to what I would like to call very mashallah. But guess what? I put a smiley face and I go, mashallah, this food is absolutely fantastic. Mm. And the wife feels absolutely good and the kids feel good. And I eat and I have forgotten all the foods that I've eaten that shouldn't be eaten. But guess what? The impact of that Hey, this is an absolutely, mashallah, what did you put, what ingredients did you put in this? Mm, I can smell some, I can taste some garlic. Sometimes I get smacked for the wrong reasons, but uh, most cases it gets the job done. So compliments exchange in front of the kids is great. The husband buys you a gift, share it with your kids. He comes home with a gift to you, open it up with the kids. Come on, come on, daddy bought me a gift, let's see what he did. And you do the same thing for him. Involve the kids in anything that brings them closer and to grow not emotionally cold. Tell good stories about you and your husband before you got married. Kids love that kind of stuff. How did mom and dad meet? How, what was the, what is it? They love all these things. It's part of who they are. Well, guess what? Share it with them. Tell them the goodies about their father and you. Don't lie though. But do say that. Better still, have a laugh with your husband about those things in front of them and with them. It will create an element of comfort that only Allah wa Taala knows the impact in these days and age. Trigger curiosity in the child by asking intelligent, good questions about the other parent. For example, ask him, sweetheart, what do you like most about daddy? What it is that he does to you that you love it most? And let the kids talk on that and pay attention to what the kid says. Because what he says about his father or his mother, he is indirectly saying that, look dad or look ma'am, if you be like that, I would love you both to no end. So ask him intelligent questions, not to pull information out of the nose, but good questions to get good idea as to how we are performing with the children. 
Also, my brothers and my sisters, when outside with the child alone, either the father with the kids or the mother of the kids, let them feel that the other partner, the other spouse is part of them, even though physically he is not or she is not with you. For instance, you'll be walking, ma'am, and you look at the, and you go, sweetheart, what do you think if you bought that gift to your dad? Do you think you would like that? And the same thing with the father to the mother. Sweetheart, what do you think if you bought that necklace, that, that this, this to your mother? Do you think she would would like it make them part of the decision process teach them this leadership great element involve them in buying and bringing love home it will stay with them forever that dad and mom did this to each other and they could not forget that also my dear brothers and my dear sister let your children know you are going to scrub the back of their parent the father wants to have a shower. Tell them, sweetheart, I am going just to scrub the back of your dad and the camera. Okay, don't be noisy. The same thing for the mother. If you need your back scrub, let your children know. Nothing is haram about that and it, it will become something normal. But what you are doing here is you are kicking taboo where it hurts most. We have a lot of culture taboos here these days where we hardly ever speak about the relationship of the father and the mother and my sisters and my brothers. You know exactly what I'm talking. You've never seen your dad hug your mother. How, what kind of message is that? No wonder you are and she is in a messy marriage today because neither has he seen his parents exchanging love and neither have you how are you gonna exchange that together and I'll come back to this point a bit later inshallah ta'ala play pranks and tricks with them against each other yeah for the love of Allah go ahead put an egg on daddy's bed and let him go to it and have a laugh I have good memories about this <laughs> See, I'm already laughing. See, I just remember a couple of things that we did before. It's beautiful that you do them with the children. It stays in your memory. Kids, you do a lot of good to them and they're gonna forget it. When they get teenagers, they become a little, little diabolic creatures. However, when they get married and they have their own children, the past will come back vivid as ever. And suddenly you find them one day smiling and uh, just going back into the past. And my daughter Hanifa can correct me on that. If she remembers stuff that we've done or I've done or her mother did and that she does with her children and she links back to the past. Also, my brothers and my sisters, don't create a taboo atmosphere around your bedroom. It's like this is like a surgery operation in the hospital or it's like a cemetery. Don't get close to that. No, no, it's the bed. No, let them play, let them jump. I had my children, subhanAllah, when I was married, they would come to my bedroom and they would sit down and we would read and we would play card games. And I, I used to, the, the, Alhamdulillah, it was a regular, normal thing. There was nothing taboo about it. And you should also do that because you will teach your child how to be confident when he is an adult, not somebody who is completely scared of mentioning the S word. The next thing, my dear brothers and sisters, in this warm growth environment is that at the door, teach the children to appreciate the father. Teach the children to appreciate the mother. Teach them that you too are like the wings and the family as a whole is the body of the bird. The father is as important as the mother is. You could be with your children back home and then you say like 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, you go, daddy is at work working his tail off so that we have this and have this. Let's say Alhamdulillah, my children. And the kids start becoming appreciative. And then another day you go, daddy today has got a meeting, a very important meeting and it's stressful for him. Sweetheart, what do you think if we go out and buy a gift to dad or do him a card? Kids dig this stuff. They love showing affection, kids. And if your children are not showing attention to you, it's because one day they wanted to do it and you locked them up. It's either they did something you did not appreciate it, or they did something and you didn't thank them for that, or you belittled it. You have done something that locked their creativity away. So it is a good idea to reopen it uh, that way. So by doing this, you are injecting components for a successful relationship and marriage in the future. The way you educate kids is actually how you are telling them to be when they grow old. So please, please, please use all the good components. Not only do you teach them love, but also you open a world of positive Islamic emotions. 
by helping them break away from the tight rusty grip of the nasty and horrible bacterial pond called culture. Let your kids grow in a positive, confident, proactive world so that they will never ever compromise on their identity, persona or their religion. They will always be the great people that they are. My dear brothers and my sisters, your children, your kids are like eggs that need the right temperature for them to hatch. Don't give them a cold temperature and expect them to hatch. They're gonna die in the freeze. So I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you heed my point here. Now I go to part number two of my talk.